This Royals homestand has experienced the extreme highs of Danny Duffy's near perfection and Alex Gordon's career game to the lows of back-to-back -to -back tough losses to Chicago. Now it's Jeremy Guthrie's job to keep the Sox in the park and nail down a winning homestand for KC. Next. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's a warm one at the K for the final game of this series between the White Sox and the Royals. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This homestand has been a roller coaster ride for the Royals. They've won two, lost two, won two, then lost two. The only thing that's been consistent for Kansas City has been their inconsistency. They've been very, very good in their wins and very, very bad in their losses. Take a look at the power numbers. Four home runs in their four wins, none in their losses. Look at the team ERA, 225 in their wins, 5.00 in their losses. And joining me tonight, of course, is Rex Hudler. And Rex, Jeremy Guthrie must keep the ball down and keep the socks in the hamper. He knows how to handle those dirty socks, for sure. And if he can get that win, that'll be a winning homestand. It's a beautiful thing for this team. The real Guthrie needs to stand up. And our MTP of the game, most trusted player, brought to you by Honda, is, of course, Jeremy Guthrie against Chicago. And one of the reasons why Ned likes his chances is look at that record against the White Sox. Now, beyond that, the team has eight out of ten wins against the Sox. So they win when Guthrie shows up. Those pitches we're seeing right here is exactly what he wants to do. Keep the ball in the park and pound the ground. Use that great defense that he has behind him. The Royals have been out homered by Chicago 5 nothing in this series. How about some power from Kansas City? How about tonight? And support Jeremy Guthrie. Royals and Sox next.
left to be played, but so far it has been a rough go against the American League Central for the Royals. 5 and 15, 239 batting average, a run differential of negative 39 and a 4.91 ERA. They will try to make up for that a little bit here tonight. Joel Goldberg back at Kauffman Stadium. And hey, the Royals have scored six runs in each of the games. The problem is they have allowed seven ones. We're out here in home run territory. Adam Dunn hit one all the way back there yesterday in that game. So the Royals, they need to avoid the sweep. And while Nedio says it's not a must win, it's an important one. They're all important. They're yeah, right. It doesn't matter. You're always coming out looking to win, but it'd be a big night, it'd be a big win for us tonight. We get this one. Well, Jeremy Guthrie takes the hill, five and two with a two-six zero as a Royal against the White Sox. He hopes to continue that. First pitch is coming up next. by your Kansas City Chevy dealer. It's Chevy Truck Month. Visit your Kansas City Chevy dealers. Buy the Missouri Lottery. Try the Missouri Lottery's new Lucky 7s playbook. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Welcome back to the K for the Royals and White Sox. Robin Ventura's Sox are hitting 311 with five home runs in this series. They'll start things with Adam Eaton, who has come back from the disabled list with a right hamstring problem to go three for 14. And then Gordon Beckham, Connor Gillespie, and Diane Viciato, five different socks, have gone deep. Guthrie, he knows his role. And what he does is a beautiful thing when he keeps that ball down. He's got really nice movement on his pitches. Now, he has allowed the homers that we've talked about that that leads the American League with 12. He's tied overall in Major League Baseball with Milwaukee's Marco Estrada. But Gu Guthrie has the will to win and his teammates love to play behind him here at the game. And you can see that number six plus innings at 37 starts since 2013. He is an innings eater and he's also a pitcher who pitches to his defense. Escobar is beautiful in the fort around the horn infield. He is really solid this year. He's having a gold glove season with the glove. Now his bat's coming around too, so he's been really solid. You don't want to hit the ball to him if you can. There is Escobar, only three errors this year, and he has the highest fielding percentage of any shortstop since the All-Star break last year. Did make an error on Monday. 
And Jeremy Guthrie is an innings eater. As we take a look at this graphic, Adam Wainwright with 40 starts since 2013 of six or more innings. James Shields right there. And Guthrie with 37 HUD. He went eight innings and took a tough luck loss to Baltimore last start. Let's take a look at the umpires with the crew chief Tom Hallion behind home plate. Eric Cooper at first base. Guccione's at second and Barber at third. We are ready to go as the Royals come in with a record of 22 and 23. The White Sox tied with Kansas City for third place in the Central at 23 and 24. Royals desperately need for the real Jay Guts to show up for tonight's game. Execute his pitches. He's got a four seam fastball, two seam sinker. He's got a curveball, a change up. He's going to mix all of them and try to keep him down. He's a fly ball pitcher. But he really wants to make sure that, especially when men get on, that he doesn't challenge too many guys up there and try to maybe pitch backwards. Throw his off speed pitches and hitters counts. And with Chicago's power, you don't want to walk anybody and Guthrie has shown very good command this year. He's held opponents to eight walks over his last eight outings. Good fastball there down with two balls two strikes to eat. And the fact that he's walked so little batters that, that this season that's a ratio of one point eight four batters per nine innings. That's the lowest of his career. So that's important when you're facing guys that can go deep. Don't give many free passes. Eaton slashes one foul and he has an opposite field stroke and the Royals defense haven't played that way. Gordon pulled way around and left towards the line. They play him to pull just a slight pull on the infield. He's pesky. Cracks that one to the second baseman Siriaco who throws out Eaton. And there's one down. Well, it's a lovely 85 degree day, rather humid today, partly cloud, and winds out of this west southwest at just four miles an hour. 85, time for the Royals to let her fly. Are you kidding me? This is beautiful baseball weather. Now, Gordon Buckham, he's come off the disabled list, really swinging a hot bat. Last 14 games, batting 356. With all three of his home runs in that span. Talked about how Guthrie's had some really good numbers as far as the win loss total against the White Sox. So there's not many hitters facing him today that have great numbers off of him. There's a few guys that have got some hits. There's three home runs in this lineup off Guthrie. With the exception of Canerco, who has four. That's right. I uh, I missed his total. Well, Jeremy didn't. No, and it's a good thing. It's better I miss it than he. As you said many times, everybody knows who's in everybody's book. How many home runs up a certain pitcher? How many home runs by a certain hitter? Oh, they have memories that are unbelievable. Some hitters though only have a chapter. They don't have a full book. How many paragraphs do you have? <laughs> That's what I was referring to, but <laughs> since you brought it up. <laughs> just a chapter. How many do you have? 56 and 55 of them scraped the back of the wall. That's 56 more than I got, Hud. All right. The one-two pitch. Low and outside. Brett Hayes, of course, catching for the second straight start because Salvador Perez came out of Monday's game with an aggravated web of his right hand between the thumb and index finger. He is day to day. Royals hoping to get him back on Saturday. And Beckham skies it in the air left side. Alex Gordon. Two out. You know, I talked with Jeremy Guthrie yesterday about he's getting a little more twist in his lower half. Remember when he joined the Royals a couple of years ago, Dave Island got together with him and said, hey, look, 
your ball's too straight. We've got to create some kind of movement. So why don't you take those hips and turn them a little bit more towards center field before you deliver, and that's going to give you a little more coil and a little more action on your two-seamer. And he's been doing it even more. See how he's, he's really turning it. We remember Rex when he was first acquired and his first three starts were a little rough. But after the work with Island, he took off and just had a fantastic finish of 2012 with his new ball club. And that was a marvelous trade made by Dayton Moore sending Jonathan Sanchez who had failed miserably with Kansas City to Colorado for Guthrie and Guthrie's been terrific and particularly terrific at the K going 15 and 9 with a 374. Here's Gillespie. Mm. This guy loves hitting here. Man. That was scary right over the shoulder of Jeremy and a base hit for Connor who now has an eight game hit streak. Guthrie was telling me that the more twist he does with his lower bodies he's going to chuck and duck on this one. The more twist allows his arm to be on time. Ooh, man that came too close. I'll say. So Gillespie continues to swing a hot bat and here's Diane Viciato three for eight in the series had a home run in Monday's seven six win for Chicago. He is four this year and has hit as many as twenty five in a season that came two years ago. To left field Gordon. At the track pulls it down so Jeremy with two flyouts in the first inning and works around a two out single by Gillespie. Whew. will lead things off for Kansas City as they're trying to take the final game of this three game series from Chicago. Aoki Escobar Eric Hosmer and then Billy Butler who seems to round into form in the last week. Hey look any any one of those guys out there they're looking to step up get some guys on steal some bases like they have been doing that's important for this team. But Quintana has been very stingy especially when it comes to walks he's a strike thrower. He's made 43 consecutive starts allowing three walks or less and that ties in with Seattle's Iwakuma for eighth longest active streak in baseball. So he's not going to give many free passes hitters like to see a guy like this throw strikes make some contact Alexi Ramirez. He's been really good this year and last night's play he made saved the game and I made a, a comment at the time that might have saved the game and it turned out it did. He saved a run with that hot smash to his backhand. He is playing lights out this year. Hawk Harrelson says he's the best shortstop in the American League and Hawk really believes he is the best in the major leagues but there's that guy at Colorado who's pretty good. Yeah but what about Escobar. I would put Escobar up against uh, Alexi any day. I would too. Hawk was talking about total package offense and defense. OK I'd agree with him. And Aoki. With a 266 batting average. 
Quintana misses away. Okay, and Quintana is not overpowering by any means. He's a he's a guy that's going to go 88 to 92. Sinks his fastball, he'll cut it. He's got a really good cutter he'll use against righties. Curveballs to lefties and changeups to righties as well. So he's a three pitch guy, but combination with the two pitches off his fastball makes him more like five or six. The fastball is the best pitch in baseball because you can manipulate it. You can change speeds with it. You can cut it. You can sink it. You can four seam it. There's so many options a pitcher has off of that pitch. Aoki takes a called strike three and Norrie still stands in the batter's box as if to say Tom Hallion I disagree with the location of that last pitch. Love Tom Hallion's strike call. Not necessarily against the Royals but look at that drama. Talk about Guthrie's twist. Tom Hallion's got a little twist of his own. 22nd year in the big leagues Tom Hallion great umpire. So Aoki and the rest of the Royals hitters I'm sure they're schooled on Quintana. He's a strike thrower. anything close you got to be hacking. Escobar does and he finds himself like Nori down in the count immediately 0 2 yeah, especially with two strikes. Hasn't allowed a home run in his last four starts you know he, he's confident against this Royals team. As far as the long ball goes. Escobar went 0 for 5 in last night's 7 6 loss. And that one's low and in. Did they call that a strike? Yes, yes they did. Oh, my goodness. He's out on the swing. I was watching Escobar and I thought he held up. The first base umpire, Eric Cooper, said no. Well, that's a swing. Back to back strikeouts by Quintana, who has 47 now in almost 55 innings. And the one guy he has absolutely owned in his career is the Royals' first baseman, Eric Hosmer. Eric just two for 21. And he chases the first pitch slider. He thought it would be a fastball. I was talking to Billy Butler about. His cut fastball, and he said he just hammers it in on my hands and cuts it away from Eric. Hosmer just five hits and 33 at bats on this homestand to see his batting average go from the 320s down to 290. And that will make it to first just barely where Dunn is and a quick and easy first inning. For the Chicago pitcher.
victory on this Wednesday night. But if they are, they've got to cool off this guy, Adam Dunn. Rex hit one of the longest home runs we've seen in this ballpark. Well, you know, it, it, as big as this guy is, he reminds me of Paul Bunyan in the fairy tales. I mean, he, he's a monster. And whenever he connects with that barrel, it, there's not a ballpark in the world that can hold him. He can hit a homer in Yellowstone National Park. The ball got small in a hurry, but you know you can pitch to him. He's a strikeout guy too. You can you can strike him out. He's only hit one home run out of his seven hits off Guthrie. Adam now with 447 home runs in his big league career. You can see what he's done against Guthrie. One home run, five RBIs. He ranks 38th all time with that total of 447 home runs. Two behind Jeff Bagwell and Vladimir Guerrero. Breaking ball misses low and in. And it's a 2 1 count. He's got great plate discipline, 29 walks on the season. Jeremy staying inside, tried to sneak that two seamer in, but. Missed and it's three and one. And the active home run leaders, A Rod, suspended this year with 654. And Pujols got his 500th just a couple of weeks ago. And there is ball four to Dunn. Hey fans, it's time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag KC fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. We come to you from the K, Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, and Jeff Montgomery. Talk about the pop that the White Sox have, but man, down in their order is where the power is. Dunn, Ramirez, Canerco. And Ramirez has already matched his home run total from last year with six, got number six on Monday when the Royals were leading 5 nothing. his three-run home run into the Royals pen gave them their start to their best comeback of the year. That's up the middle. Guthrie has it. Goes second one. First base. Oh. Throws it away. Siriaco with a terrible toss. And Dunn came in hard, but Pedro was right there to turn it, but a poor throw. Hosmer didn't have anything to do on that one. He was like, really? He just whiffed the throw. Guthrie had plenty of time to get it to him, and Siriaco was not accurate. He thought Rusty wanted to play. This is Siriaco's third start in the last four games. The Royals sent Johnny Giovatello back to the minor leagues in Omaha. And no errors charged because the runner didn't advance. Paul Canerco will start things. He's in his 17th big league season. His home run won Monday's game. A long blast to center field. One of three home runs allowed by Vargas. Other than that, he's been very quiet. Just one hit. That was the one hit in his last 23 at bats. Royals can't afford to be given these White Sox in the extra outs. Well, he loves hitting in this ballpark. Look at the power numbers 19 home runs and 77 RBIs. 19 of his 44 big flies in this yard. The runner goes, pitch taken, throw by Brett Hayes is not in time. A stolen base for Ramirez, and that's number eight. Great jump off of Guthrie. Nothing Hayes could have done. He made a perfect throw, even. Watch this break he got. Now, Alexi Ramirez, Diane Viciato, you know, a few of their guys have really stepped up this year, even Flowers. And I was talking with Harold Baines today. 
He's a longtime great White Sox Hall of Famer for the White Sox. And I was asking him. Is mainly about Lexi Ramirez. Is he having a year like this because it's a contract year for him or did, did Jose Abreu energize this team in spring training? And he said Abreu made them better hitters because he, they, he had such good plate discipline and power and energy that those other guys have been able to feed off of this guy. Now the Royals are fortunate that Jose Abreu is not in there. He's currently on the disabled list with a, a banged up ankle. But one a new guy a new fresh new face like Abreu can energize a ball club and that's what's happened here offensively for this team. And I remember when the Royals played the White Sox earlier this year they had four players in the lineup from Cuba and that really helps bring the ball club together. Rex that was explained to me one time by Kendrys Morales who said in the offseason everybody goes home but I can't go home Kendrys of course from Cuba and after he defected and the same thing is true with Diane Viciato and Alexi Ramirez and Jose Abreu those guys are all tight man. And, and there's other Cuban ball players on different teams and and just because they're not on the same team doesn't mean they're not tight they're all they all hang together and stay together. Everybody has each other's phone numbers they text one another they have for encouragement. Panerko with a 2 2 count. Jeremy Guthrie. Outside three balls and two strikes. Guthrie is a competitor. And he likes to compete with each hitter that steps in there. And so three and two we'll see if he gives in with a, with a breaking ball or if he challenges Paul Canerco. Hayes has his fingernails colored. So you can see the signs. Got it on the hands of Paul and he fouled it off. But if I take a look back. Jeremy Guthrie Rex walked four in his opening game against the Chicago White Sox and then after that one two zero one two one zero one and he's walked one in this inning. Yeah, so you know he, he threw that ball right down the middle. Sometimes hitters will get themselves out on a fastball even a little two seamer but it's got to be down. Use your de defense. Paul hits it to left center field and Kane won't be able to reach it. Coming around is Ramirez to score one nothing Chicago. Came with a fastball again. Canerco had a good idea it was coming, but he didn't barrel it. It it got in on it. Or might have hit it off the end. And he just dumped it in there. No chance. Kane was measuring the dive. You know he'll get some uh, some of that Trevor turf on him if he you know if he thinks he can. But there was no chance for the dive. Where well, the walks have really hurt the Royals in Game One. Jason Vargas only walked two, but they preceded two home runs. And now a walk. A fielder's choice when Siriaco could not complete the double play. A stolen base, and the result is a. Well placed single by Canerco gives Chicago the early lead. Diazza he too has been in a slump two for twenty five. Low. Guthrie's working down in the zone because he wants to roll that double play. And you know once in a while I, I, I say Trevor turf and that's Trevor Vance the great groundskeeper here. It tends the yard at the K. He's the best in the league. Good off speed pitch thrown by Jeremy and he gets a foul ball struck by Diazza who is a guy you can strike out. He has struck out 39 times already this year. A lot of pitches early just to get four outs. To the shortstop. Siriaco this time. Will not be able to get Diaz up. That's what Guthrie wanted. Diaz runs well, though, and he's on the left side of the batter's box, so he's a lot closer to first base. 
He beat that out. And the fact that Syriaco was playing him in that hole made him a little bit tardy to second base. Sometimes you got to give up some ground in order to turn that double play. That double play is a pitcher's best friend, and Guthrie needs all the outs he can get. It looked routine at the beginning, but as you said, Syriaco so far away from the bag yes. had a long way to go. It's too far. Now Tyler Flowers, three for eight in this series with a home run. Middle infielders, they can look at second base, and they can tell if they're close enough or far enough away that they can get there on a hard hit ball. And that that makes communication even more important especially the way the infielders are shifting this season in baseball. You've got to be looking at your shortstop your second baseman your third baseman and there's always contact you don't use verbal but you use body signs body language. Hey I'm over here get it to me quicker. See he's looking he's, he's looking at Esper. You always got to be looking. Uh oh. And Guthrie throws it away. That is Jeremy's fourth error this year and that is astounding considering what a fine fielder he is. But three I believe have been on pickoffs. He's he's trying to get an out and it was just underneath the body of Piazza. That's 12 errors by the Royals pitching staff. This year. Another man in scoring position in flowers sends it foul so. Guthrie's going to have to take care of one thing and one thing alone and that is Tyler flowers right here. Who came in hot hitting 310 this year three home runs. Pacing of this game is painfully slow right now as Guthrie is trying to maneuver his way through this lineup. Knocked down the line. Valencia has it. Long throw in the dirt. What a pick by Hosmer. That saved a run. Okay, he's got a really good arm. He plants his feet, taps it, gets it going. Hosmer, sweet hands.
question of the day. Ramley question of the day. Which last place team from last year has been the biggest surprise this season? The Blue Jays, two over 500. The Marlins at 500. The Rockies, six over. Or the White Sox, who lost 99 games last year at 23 and 24. Text Sprint at 432432 and enter A, B, C, or D. Chicago last year, Rex, was 26 and 50 inside the Central. They're 11 and 10 this year, so. They are much better and with the Sprint family plan everyone gets unlimited talk text and one gigabyte of data for as low as twenty five dollars a month per line while on the Sprint network. The more people added up to ten total the lower your rate plus while you save as a team all accounts can be billed individually. My choice is the Rockies. Yeah their offense has been off the charts the Royals swept the Rockies. Last week to start this homestand. Strike one. Billy four for eight in the series. Beginning to pick things up before game hit streak. Knows that long ball's coming. Just didn't know when. He has hit 44 the last two seasons, only one in his first 45 games this year. He told me today it's a waiting game. Indeed. And a lot of Royals fans waiting for the offense to emerge. Trying to get that stroke right to the opposite field. Just like that swing there. And he'll get it. He said he was expecting a lot of cut fastballs on his hands from Quintana. He's broken a few of his bats in the past. To right field and deep. Viciato will way back and reaches up and pulls it down. Didn't quite get it enough. And there's a lot said around the league about Coffin Stadium. Number one is how beautiful the yard is. Number two, hitters talk about, ah, oh, it's not a hitter's park. Well, you know what? I know I've also talked to some that disagree with that. Okay, it eats up homers from maybe the gap to center field because it is a little bit larger and the wall is a little bit higher. But look at all that green grass. This is a good hitting field. It's a good hitter's field. There's a lot of areas to get singles and doubles in this field. Okay, that's a perfect swing. He didn't do anything wrong with that. Nice finish. Finishes high. That allows a little backspin. Hey, coming down, getting some backspin on that ball. Helps the ball carry. There is more square feet in the outfield than any other ballpark. So like you said, HUD, more singles, more doubles. Yeah. But fewer home runs. Yeah, it's, it's still, still, that said, Chicago has five and the Royals have zero in the first two games of this series. And and those take pressure off the pitchers, the home runs do. And they you know, can certainly help you nice big hop for Ramirez and he throws out Gordon for out number two but when you don't have power you utilize what you do have and that is an offense built for this stadium here they they're a doubles hitting team singles they run you know they steal hit and run and they manufacture runs this is a good ballpark for the Royals to be in Adam Dunn, he's happy about getting some playing time at first base. With Jose Abreu out. Danny Valencia, there's his offensive numbers and flash some pretty good letter. Leather in the last inning. Great pick, though, by Eric Hosmer to dig the ball out in the dirt. Danny goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Back is flowers, but it will reach the seat. So Danny down in the count, 0-1. Okay, last inning. Okay, this is a tough play, no question about it. Flowers, he might be the catcher, but man, he gets down that line. So a good throw, it stayed low, and that allowed Hosmer to really dig it a little bit easier. When it's a lower trajectory, it stays down. It's a little easier pick. 
But just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. I thought Danny Valencia had three quality at bats last night a double the opposite field that drove in two a key single and also a very good walk late. Walk came in the eighth inning. He said how he was mad at himself on the swing he took at the three one pitch that was in the dirt. He goes what am I doing. And then the next pitch though he took it when it was low and he walked. The key for him is to slow everything down. He's got not good hands. And just doesn't want to jump out there. He's, he wasn't anxious last night. He was able to do it. And he told me that was the key. He agreed. Just slow it down and try to just, you know, see the ball in the area where you can have some success. And most hitters will tell you that's a ball out over the middle. Always tough against lefties. Led the American League last year with a 371 average against Southpaws. And he sends that one to third. Well played by Gillespie, and his throw is in time. Three up, three down for KC. One nothing, Chicago after two. Omar Infante getting some work done out there today with the training staff and some good news. He took batting practice with the team yesterday for the first time. Said he felt no ill effects at all. The back felt nice and loose, not tight at all. Today was the first day he was going to run the bases, he said, and take ground balls. That's been the bigger issue for him, bending over to get those ground balls. But he said so far progress has been good. He expects to come back to the ballpark on the off day tomorrow, get another one of those workouts in. And then he said if he responds well to that, he thinks he could be very close to either getting back in the games or maybe a couple of days of rehab, but looking very positive right now. Siriaco takes care of Adam Eaton. And Rex, that guy is so important to this Royals lineup, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, you know, and he'll be he'll be back, hopefully for that Angel series. But let me tell you. Being on the disabled list is no picnic. It's not a day at the beach. You work more on the disabled list than you do when you're a regular player. I mean, it can be tiresome. You come to the ballpark early at 12 o'clock. You got to get your work in before the regulars come in and get their treatments. And then you stay after sometimes. I mean, it can be a real bur uh, bummer, man. I'm, guys, guys don't like it. Nobody wants to be. They want to play. Yeah, no one wants to be in Camp Snoopy. You've got to explain that. Well, that's a term players would use and certain teams I played for for being on the disabled list. Just sitting on the top of a doghouse. Huh? Well, yeah, people think that's what that is, but no, <laughs> you're working. Beckham has been working. Really playing good baseball this time of the year and last year he missed the first two months of the season when he broke the hook of the hammock bone in his hand. 
and was out until early June. He hits that one well. Center field. Kane off to the races. It's over his head. And Beckham will take second base with a one out double. Man, they have squared up the baseball in this series. They're on a roll. That's a good pitch there. You look where Hayes was going to catch that on the ground. That's a, that's low. That's where, that's a spot he wanted. But Beckham really went down and got it. See how he bent that back leg? Bent that back leg that lowers the, the hitting body so you can reach that outside pitch and barrel it. Perfect form. Chicago much improved, but you just wonder for how long. I mean, they are dead last in ERA, and their bullpen has thrown more innings than any other team. It's not a good combination once you get to August. Connor Gillespie ripped a single his first time up. He now has 13 hits in his last 27 at bats. His brother Casey is a star at Wichita State, and I'm told likely a first round pick. Yep, Strong that. switch hitting first baseman who played in that Shockers game against Mizzou here at the K a few weeks back. There's Connor with runners in scoring position. That ball, Gordon Beckham hit, would have been out in Chicago. Way inside. Guthrie has been behind a lot of Chicago hitters early in this game. He's walked one. That man eventually would score or his. The walk would lead to a run. The next man would reach on the fielder's choice and Ramirez scored. And now Guthrie throws past second base to Escobar. No play was on. And Jeremy right now wants to communicate with Alcides. I think he may have thought a play was on. Yeah, but you know what he did. He, he was smart enough to throw the ball anyway to Escobar. He threw it right at him. Esky's watching. He's going to catch it just because he didn't break to the bag. So now Hayes going to talk to him about it, make sure everything's okay. Now watch this. I mean, that's smart. Because he, initially, when he stepped off, Gordon Beckham didn't even move. So Guthrie said, all right, I'll throw one at your head at my shortstop. I liked it. A tapper to Siriaco. Quick toss. Two out. Beckham moves to third on the ground out, and now Guthrie must get Viciato. I mean, you know, well, not not like I didn't like the fact that Guthrie threw at, towards his head, but it was a it was a wake up call. Way inside. Viciato has to jump out of the way. Adam Dunn waiting his turn on deck. You know, that is important for Guthrie to pitch inside. Knock the guys off the plate. Line to center field, and Kane will make a nice read and a run saving catch. It was Valencia and Hosmer made a great play to save a run in the second, and now Kane in the third. Oh, nice play. He's safe.
Tennessee in 2001. Jamie's son Aiden was born without eyes or eye structure. As a result, Jamie created the Aiden McVicker Charitable Fund, which provides funding for local specialized schools and organizations and to help families with children with special needs. Each year, the charity holds a golf tournament called Aces for Aiden, which was established to honor Aiden and his spirit. Thank you, Jamie. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Jose Quintana, perfect through two, facing Lorenzo Cain. In there, and he has been in front of everybody. 01, 02. Got to be ready to swing when you get in that box. And he can be sneaky. He'll, he'll bury that breaking ball down there, and his cutters are coming in on righties and some change ups, but. He's got a quick tempo and he's a confident pitcher. You could tell by looking at him. Change up. Beauty. Wow. He has three strikeouts in this evening's ball game. Get you. Down 0 2 easier. You're down in the count. That's what he's going to do. You're going to have to discipline yourself to lay off of that. It's exactly what he wants you to do. Now, Pedro Siriaco, who got his first two hits of the season last night, he started the year at AAA Omaha, hit 300 there with six doubles. Called up, and he's a guy who has greater flexibility than Johnny Giovatella, who really only has one position, second base. But Siriaco has played seven positions in his career. The only two he has not played are catcher and pitcher. Strike in there. I mean, his command has been rock solid to start this game. HUD, with that little hesitation that he has, that little funky pause. Right before he goes into his windup, would that bother a hitter? Yeah, throw your timing off a little. Anything pitchers can do to manipulate the timing of the hitter is what they what they try to do. The guys that have some type of distraction in their delivery, it's better for them. He's facing right at you here. You're still picking up his release point. Trying to pick that up in any kind of rotation. Ramirez, quick toss. Siriaco safe. Just flying down that first base line. The Royals have their first. Base runner of the night. He wanted it. That's what you do. He's kind of running coming out of that box. So he had a little bit of a lean and a head start. There's no play. Ninety feet. The Royals stole four bases last night, Hud, and lost the game. Do you expect them to be ultra aggressive tonight? Yeah, pedal to the metal again. Why not? He's got a little slide step he'll use, and, and that's his move. It's an average to slightly above average move. It's not a, a great left handed pickoff move like you see from some guys. Not like a Chris Sale or anybody like that. Every left hander should have a great move. We should work on that. See that slide step there? That'll, that cuts down the time that it takes for him to get that ball home to Flowers. And Flowers this year. He's eight for 37 and throwing base stealers out. That's 22 percent. Not bad. Anything 30 percent by a catcher is good. Siriaco goes pitches hit to the first baseman done and he has no play at second so touches the bag and Hayes is out number two and no luck for Hayes. None at all. Baseball gods giving him no love. 
still hasn't gotten a base hit. That whole right side was wide open. Look at that. He did all he wanted to do, a little hit and run there, but he hit it right at Canerco. You see all that room there with Gordon Beckham covering second base? He's saying, man, ah, just a little bit behind that ball. If I would have been out in front of it a little more, could have rolled it in that hole and had him a knock. Brett playing a lot more lately, but still 0 for 20 this year. And there's a base hit to left field by Oki. And here comes Siriaco to the plate. He will score. This game is tied at one. There's the importance of moving runners. And Aoki just hitting a buck 89 with runners in a scoring position. He needed that hit in the worst way for confidence. He's been leaving guys on base this whole week. Diaz was playing him shallow. But typically your left fielder doesn't have the best arm. That's Aoki's first hit in his last 16 at bats with a runner in scoring position. I knew it had been a bunch. I didn't know it was that many. That's why Ned wanted to be aggressive with Siriaco because singles hitters were coming up, even though Escobar has several extra base hits this year, including two home runs. They chase Aoki back, who has five steals this year. Escobar with 11 doubles and two home runs. Up the middle, base hit, Escobar. Aoki stops at second base. Right between the wickets. Now you're going good. When you get a hit like that, because it doesn't hit his leg and deflect it to a, another defender. Oh, that'll work. What'll really work here is a nice big hit for Hosmer and for Guthrie. Well, here is Eric Hosmer grounded out to first his first time up, and he is now two for his last 22. Aoki at second base and Escobar at first base in the two for his last 22. That's against Quintana. Who worked him with the curveball early and then went away with the cutter late. Hosmer 21 RBIs. First pitch is high. He swung at the first pitch, his first at bat. And you figured he would take this one. Breaking ball outside. Well, Jose Quintana struggles in this situation. Look at that, a 295 average with runners on, but has the third highest batting average with runners in scoring position at 350. Yeah. Well, so Hosmer being patient here, he needs to. He doesn't have to do it. There's two outs. Billy Butler's on deck. Just look for your pitch. You don't have to do it all yourself. Oh, he missed that. That was there. That was his pitch that mm. you're talking about. Right. Now, Katana's not going to give him another one of those, especially after you're on it like that. That had dead center field written all Ooh, over. It. Baby. That's a max effort swing. Out of play and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. He gave him a heater. Now that one wasn't where the last one was, but it was hittable and up and in. Now, now he'll probably try to break him away. See if he'll swing out of the zone. Hosmer, a 300 hitter on the nose with the runner in scoring position. A 
again came on his hands and fouled back. He's had three good rips. And Cantana's not throwing the breaking ball away. He's challenging Hosmer. He thinks he can get him with that fastball up. Which surprised me a little bit because he has that good breaker. Aoki was dancing around off second base. And Ramirez close to the bag was beginning to creep in so Quintana stepped off. There's the breaking ball and taken by Eric and the good thing now is if he can strike the ball in a gap he could drive in two because Aoki and Escobar will both be running. And yeah, now sometimes when when the runners are going three and two it can be distracting for a hitter. So he might try to get him out of the zone again to see if he'll swing at it. So he's got to focus on his zone and in the middle. Hosmer pulls it foul. Royals came in at 22 and 23 tied with Chicago for third place in the central. The White Sox 23 and 24. Eric Hosmer in a good battle with the shot Sox lefty. The runners. Go back to the bags as Quintana not ready to throw and they had no play on it wasn't as if Ramirez was cheating back to the bag but both runners will be off and moving with two out and a full count. Dunn has it gets it to Quintana high throw but he comes down on the bag and that will do it. For KC in the third, they do score a run on three hits and tie this game at one. Chicago White Sox and Kansas City Royals and Saturday's a full day of baseball action beginning with the Rangers taking on the Tigers on Fox Sports one. Then it's the season premiere of baseball night in America on Fox as the Royals square off against the Angels. Our Major League Baseball doubleheader begins Saturday at 2:30 on Fox Sports one and continues with the Royals and Angels at six o'clock on Fox. Adam Dunn will lead things off walk. And the next batter Ramirez would reach on a fielder's choice and he would score on Canerco's single. 
KC came back in the third with a single by Aoki that found left field his ninth RBI scoring Siriaco. Eleven of the 12 home runs that Guthrie has allowed this year have come to left handed batters. 18 of the 32 runs he's allowed this year have come by way of home runs. Jeremy not afraid to come inside. We were talking with Jim Palmer when Baltimore was in town and he said there is a way to come inside and sometimes to come inside for a ball just to set up your outside corner. And Dunn walks for the second time. You know Guthrie's being very careful with Adam Dunn and that's not a bad thing. It, look he, he can't run so he's a base clogger. So that's the second time to lead off an inning he's walked him. But that's what he's do, what he's doing he's basically clogging the bags here hoping maybe they can roll a double play. Well you've got power coming up though and Ramirez and Canerco. He's got a good eye that ball barely missed that last pitch sure does he's a, I, he's got great plate discipline. Ramirez knocks it foul. Royals lost games on Monday and Tuesday by final scores of seven to six. But Casey had the tying run at second base in the ninth inning. For both nights. This is a much more disciplined hitting team than the Royals saw earlier in April. When Jeremy's missed, he is barely missed. Royals fans, you still have a few more days to bid on the retro Negro Leagues uniforms that were worn by the Royals and Orioles last Sunday. You can bid on these one of a kind autographed game worn jerseys of players like Perez, Gordon Shields, Hosmer, and the rest of your favorite Royals, as well as select stars from the Orioles. Just go to Royals.com slash NLBM now to bid on your piece of baseball history. And they've got the lead man done. So this is starting much like the second inning started with. Done walking Ramirez then reaching on the fielder's choice. Now Jeremy wants to make sure that he stays close. Let's get the out and get out of the way. Watch out for Paul Bunyan coming down there at second base. He's a good athlete. Ramirez stole a base last time up does not go here as Paul takes strike one. White Sox make their last tour through here in September 15th 16th and 17th. The kind of career that Paul Canerco has had with the White Sox is a is a White Sox Hall of Fame career for sure. Wouldn't be surprised if the Royals didn't give him a little farewell gift on the 17th. Especially after that How about play. he gives him a gift right here and yeah. Escobar with a 4 6 3 he's the middleman. That's what Guthrie wants. Pitcher's best friend roll him.
Royals baseball is brought to you by Panera coming soon to College and King in Overland Park. And by your Midwest Ford dealers visit us at your Midwest Ford dealers dot com. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joe Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery with you at the K. 1 1 score and Billy Butler will start things against Jose Quintana. They were close to getting Quintana last inning. Hosmer had a good at bat going fouling off some pitches and he just could not barrel one to make it a big run scoring inning. Billy shoots one through the hole to right field and is one for two on the evening. So he stays hot now nine base hits in his last 18 times up. Vote for the Royals player of the month at rallyhouse.com slash Royals and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. What about a rally this inning? Royals beginning to get to Quintana. He had retired the first seven he faced. But let's see one two three four five six for the next six with base hits. Gordon one for four in his career against Jose but that one hit was a home run. And there's a breaking ball that misses away and he has not had much success against Kansas City Quintana 0 for three in his career despite four of his five starts quality starts. His team just doesn't score many runs for him when he pitches. Well, Quintana, as we take a look at our Academy Sports and Outdoors graphic, the first time through the order, he dominates. Opponents only batting 182, but second time through, 260, and third time through, almost 370 average. So this is the second time that Gordon has had a look. He grounded out to short his first time up and takes it inside. A 3-1 count to Alex. Quintana wanted that one. Alex wanted to save his lumber. He didn't want to swing at that one. <laughs> Good point because we all know that Alex breaks the most bats oh, in had, baseball. That had jam sandwich written, written all over it. Hit high in the air. Right field. Viciedo had to come a long way to make the catch. But the result is out number one. Now this is the time of the evening where you can lose a fly ball in the twilight. Got some cloud cover here. The clouds are gray. When that ball gets up there sometimes you can miss it. Former corn husker Darren Erstad. He used to wear amber lenses this time of night. He had them in the dugout and whenever he went out there this time of the evening when he played for the Angels he would Put those things on it brighten things up because he dropped a few of those. And the studies they found were that they went to skeet shooters who wear, wore those amber colored glasses and they said the skeet just uh, appeared more precise. So I said well, well let's do that in baseball. Valencia takes strike one. I remember the old slugger Mark McGuire wore amber colored contact lenses. And he looked like he had lizard eyes when he had him in. He looked like the Hulk. Indeed. <laughs> the 0 1 pitch is taken low and in. One ball, one strike. Okay, Valencia, he's got some pop. He can get a ball out over the middle of the plate, put his swing on it, he can hit a two run homer. He's hot. He hit eight last year for the Baltimore Orioles and that was in a limited number of games just 52 because he was on that minor league major league roller coaster back and forth. That's right wait him out. 
Hunter pitch. With a left hander. CJ Wilson waiting for the. Royals when they get to Anaheim on Friday night. This would be a good tune up for him. Wilson throws a lot of cutters in. This is the pitch here. That's up the middle base hit. They'll take the lousy single. So he has three hits in his last five at bats. And. He's, he's very quiet at the plate. He's feeling good. Lorenzo Kane. He's got a. 345 batting average with runners in scoring position. That is tops in this lineup here. Three RBIs in this series. Right man right spot. Ball one. That's right now. Second time around. Wait him out. He got Lorenzo to swing on that changeup. Royals fans are trying to help here. One ball, one strike. Well located pitch. That was down low, right below the knees. Kane four for his last six with runners in scoring position. Stay hot. Butler second. Kane first. Quintana's one one. Ripped down the line, but got too far out in front. Boy, that brought HUD out of his seat and almost jumped into the uh, diamond club. Well, you know, that's the cutter inside, and he was waiting for that. He was just a little out in front. Now with two strikes, Kane's got to be thinking that changeup's coming, but don't take your mind off the fastball. He might sneak it, try to sneak another cutter in there. He struck him out on the changeup back in inning number three. A blooper to left. In comes Diazza, and the ball will drop. Billy has to hustle the third. He does. Boy, he read that one well. Because that's one of those situations, Rex, if the ball drops, sometimes you're in the middle, and you've got 45 feet to go, and you get forced out. Well, that's where instinctive base running comes in. You don't have to be a fast runner, but you can, you can measure it. Okay, where Billy is, he's measuring it right now. He's saying, okay, okay, does it look like it? Yeah, I better get my horse here. Okay, they're all loaded up. Syriaco. The Royals have been searching for a big hit. They came in hitting just 238 with runners in scoring position. Syriaco hasn't had many opportunities. He is just three for ten this year. You see his numbers good against Quintana, and that was as a member of the Boston Red Sox. Look for your pitch. Right oh. back, a one, a two, and a three double play. That will not get it done. Holy smokes.
managed here for the Kansas City Royals after a very successful year as a catcher, now bench coach for the Yankees. And last night he was very proud because his younger son, Francisco, made his major league debut as a catcher right here for the Royals and threw out a base runner trying to steal. Joel Goldberg back at Kauffman Stadium. This is a stadium, while it's changed a little bit, that Francisco Pena grew up in because in the summers after school from the Dominican Republic, he'd come up here, hang out with the Royals, hang out with his dad. He says nowadays, guys, he talks and texts with his dad every single day. He heard from his dad after the game last night who had watched it on tape. His dad had texted him again today. And what Francisco told his dad was, Dad, I was so nervous when I got out there, I felt like I was going to throw up. And his dad said, well, you've done this before. You were in the WBC. And he said, uh-uh, this was my first time. But he said that he has learned from his dad and his brother, Tony Jr., who played here, to always enjoy the game, always respect it, and always have fun. And that, of course, is what Tony Pena has done for years. And, Joel, what a fresh interview you guys had with him in the pregame show. Popped up. Escobar should take care of Diaz. And he does for the first out. You guys asked him some great questions, and he handled those questions like a real seasoned pro. Hopefully, he has a great career, like his dad. By the way, come celebrate the tradition of baseball with the Royals on Father Daughter Day, June 8th, when the Royals face off against the Yankees. As part of this special ticket package, you'll receive a limited edition Royals hat and a commemorative frame photo. Don't miss your special offer to spend the day at the K with the ones you love most visit Royals.com slash family for tickets. Well Joel Goldberg just gave us a great family story and that takes us right to that promo. Yeah. How about that young man coming to the K with his dad. As a young. Kid. You know it was great to hear the interview that Joel had with him. The honesty the freshness about his emotions about his major league debut. Now Tyler Flowers as Ventura and Pena eyeball the action. Good pitch by Jeremy. A fastball that had a little late run in on the right handed batter. Jeremy Guthrie is keeping the ball down and that's was what he needed to do so far in tonight's game nine ground ball outs only three fly ball outs. No strikeouts but. Guthrie that's what he wants to do keep the ball on the ground. And that was prior to this inning he get, did get the pop up the Aza to start the fifth. And now flowers with a 2 2 count. How back. The Royals with two golden opportunities in the third and fourth. They've left four stranded and the Sox offense has scored 55 more runs than Kansas City this year and the re reason why is power. They have 32 more home runs than KC. Little breaking ball misses and a full count. Flowers dropped about 20 pounds in the offseason. He had to do something to seize the moment. Get a chance to be an everyday catcher I man you, you, you got to. Got to do it in there. Strike three call. That is Jeremy's first strikeout, and that pitch seemed to surprise Flowers when it found the high part of the zone. Yeah, that's a nice little slider. Got the upper part of the zone. Boy, Tom Hallion looks like Enrique Palazzo from Naked Gun. Yeah, he. Uh, he really gets after it as an umpire. Yeah, call thirds. I, I like <laughs> I that. like it too. Man, I like enthusiastic mm -hmm. guys. He's into his job. Boy, that was a great scene in that movie, wasn't it? <laughs> when Leslie Nielsen sang the national anthem and that was the umpire. Yeah. You, you, what's the name of that movie? Naked Gun. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one to, to go back and look, <laughs> look at. If any of you young players out there want to watch some baseball and laugh. <laughs> And of, of course the real Enrique Palazzo was listening inside underneath after he had been 
kidnapped by Leslie Nielsen and tied up. And he's going, oh, no, my career is going down. Don't, don't give away the story. Okay. Look, there might be some people <laughs> haven't seen it. In there on the outside corner to Adam Eaton, two out. Guthrie trying to get his first clean one, two, three inning. He did walk a man in the fourth. Then got a force out and then got Kanerka to hit into a 4 6 3 double play. Eat way out in front. He swings and misses. Two strikeouts for Guthrie in the fifth. The Royals tied with Chicago at one. Student night at the K. They're loving it. Now get them some runs. Thoroughbred Ford, the selection is bigger and the prices are lower at Thoroughbred Ford. And buy steel. Find a helpful servicing steel dealer near you. Visit steeldealers.com. On a magnificent evening in Kansas City, absolutely gorgeous weather for baseball. Royals will be off on a quick three day road trip. And then come straight back to play the Houston Astros for three next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Two evening games, Monday and Tuesday, against the Astros. And then Wednesday will be an afternoon affair, and kids are getting out of school, so come to the K. That's right. Here is Brett Hayes hunting for that first base hit of the year. Back up the middle. How about that? I think if it doesn't hit off the mound, it would go up the middle for a base hit, but Buzzard's luck. Hey, you just stay at it. This game is so humbling. It can bring you to your knees. It's a it's a difficult game, and it's all upstairs. It can be. It's important to wash away. The night's results, good or bad, because the next day, it's what have you done for me lately in this game? Yeah, Alex Gordon probably had about 15 minutes to celebrate his sensational Sunday when he had four for four, three runs scored, and six RBIs and two three run home runs. And then he goes, Hey, got to go back to work again tomorrow. Yeah, actually, it lasts longer than that. You, you, a, a good day, you can you can go home, watch the highlights that night, and then watch them the next day. But by the time you get to that ballpark, when you walk in them clubhouse doors, it's over. Aoki to Beckham. Two quick outs. 
Well, attention all Little Leaguers. Make sure to join us on June 8th for Little League Day as the Royals take on the Yankees. Come enjoy a day at the K and witness Yankee shortstop Derek Jeter play his final series in Kansas City before his retirement. Plus, if you purchase our special Little League Day ticket, you have the opportunity to participate in our pregame Little League Day Parade. For tickets and more information, call 816-504-4168. June 8th. Yankees and Jeter coming to town. Escobar fouls it back. He singled his last time up. Royals scored their run in the third. Aoki singled in Siriaco, but they loaded the bases with just one out, and Siriaco hit into a 1 2 3 double play. That hurt. And Derek Jeter. He's he's getting a, a lot of fanfare and he should he's a classy player and a world champion many times. However, where's the love for Paul Canerco? This is his last year 17 years in the big leagues. That guy he ought to get a little love too. Escobar flies out to center and the Royals are done in order in the fifth. At the K. Monday, May 26th. That's Camouflage Jersey Armed Forces Night. Value Monday and Tuesday, May 27th. T shirt Tuesday, a Greg Holland t shirt. One of the best closures in the game. Uh, Royals record 47 saves last year. And it's also Nurses Night at the ballpark. Boulevard Brats. Have your beer and eat it too. Jeremy Guthrie, ready for his sixth inning of work. Retired five in a row. He'll face Beckham, Gillespie, and Viciato. Gordon almost homered last time up, but doubled off the wall. Was left stranded when Lorenzo Kane made a nice running catch. And the line drive struck by Viciato. Popped up. Kane. One out. Well, Jeremy has had incredible success against Chicago as a Kansas City Royal. You remember two years ago, Rex? He gave up one run in 29 and two thirds innings. Tonight he's given up one in five and a third. He is being the real Jay Guts tonight. That's his Twitter handle. That's right. And no run support so far. It's on the way. Connor Gillespie, one for two. Singled first time up, grounded out next. You can see what Guthrie has done first, second, and third time through an order. And he's seeing Gillespie for the third time. And Hosmer will take care of it. Jeremy runs by.
Rex what adjustment has Jeremy made from the first two innings where he was allowing a lot of base runners but all of a sudden boy he looks rock solid He's picked up his tempo. He's getting it and throwing it. He's pitching with conviction. He's going right at him. Making him put the ball in play. And we've seen a lot of early count outs because he had a high total the first two innings. And right now his total is at 83 almost through six. And that's what you love about this guy. I mean, it looked like Baltimore had him on the ropes. And then all of a sudden he hit a spell where he just shut them down. Only allowed four runs in eight innings, but Casey was shut out by Tillman. Well, the Royals in his starts this year, they've supplied him with 4.1 runs per nine innings. I'd like to get that for him. Last year he was the starting pitcher that got the most run support and the result was 15 wins a career high. Royals third 15 game winner since 1997 Paul Bird won 17 in 2002 and Granke won 16 in 2009. Foul a ball off your knee, Fizz. That doesn't feel very good. No. And this, is this where we go to the garage and get the peen ball hammer? No. No, this is where you take some time and, and walk that thing <laughs> off. Because uh, that's, a, that's a, a stinger. That hurts. Man. Rex always likes to do comparisons of what it would be like to foul a ball off your knee or your shin well, or your foot. Yeah, this one here, that's not good. That's right off the top of his right knee. So he has to run to first base and Escobar will throw him out. Boy he ran hard. Three up three down second straight inning for Guthrie to do that and we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Hosmer Butler and Gordon coming up. Get him those runs. He's putting his guts on the line. Sixth inning, and we asked that Sprint Bramley question earlier. Which last place team from 2013 has been the biggest surprise this year? And 59% say the Rockies, who have that fantastic offense, and they have been pushing San Francisco in the National League West. Here is Hosmer to open the bottom of the sixth. Eric takes strike one. Boy, there are some pitchers that really give it the works. And our sixth inning is the Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant Randy Palmer, senior from KC Mo. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Randy will win $1,400. But if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Randy will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals.
I've got to tell our fans something, Hud. You were talking to some people the other day that, and you told them that you wanted some perfume that smelled like leather. You sprayed it all over this press box, and we're dying up here. Well, what's wrong with the smell oh of leather? Oh, my gosh. I, well, it doesn't smell like leather. Might smell like a horse's stall or something. It is now. Look, those Ooh. folks, they, you know, we talked about they, they listened to the games from Texas and, and they were we were talking in the broadcast booth about the smell of leather. They ought to make a cologne with that. And they were out. They were out in front of the K today uh -huh. when I walked in and they said, hey, HUD, this is Steve and Lori. They're from Round Rock, Texas. They said we heard the broadcast in Texas because we love the Royals and we made you some cologne that smells like leather and I went oh you guys are great could are you, you get one that smell like pizza and beer no 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 <laughs> this is a leather smell we love those guys and as a matter of fact they're spending their birthday here with the husband and wife happy birthday and that thank you is for, awesome for my gift Whew. you sprayed it all over this booth beautiful smell Billy Butler takes outside one out. Billy single to right field. That started the trouble for Quintana in the fourth. Went out later. Valencia and Kane would follow with hits. The bases were loaded, but Siriaco that then would hit into a one-two-three double play. Billy first time up, barely missed hitting it out. Same pitch. Hit high in the air. Alejandro Diaz. Two out. Hey, Royals fans, find great seats anytime, anywhere with the StubHub app. With the StubHub app, you can pick your Royals tickets and scan your barcode right at the gate using only your mobile phone. There's no need to print from home. Get the StubHub app today. Quintana to face Alex Gordon. He's got him twice. Getting Alex to ground out to short and popping up to right. Fastball in there, strike one. Quintana at 78 pitches. A little bit low, one and one. Last night we saw. Andre Rienzo, who is a rare player from Brazil. And now we get Jose Quintana. Not too many pitchers out of Colombia have made it to the big leagues, but Jose, one of them, very talented. Gordon swings and misses, one ball, two strikes. He was a nine game winner last year in 33 starts, only nine wins, but that's because he set an American League record with 17 no decisions. Wow. No runs. I don't know how many times oh. Rex. I saw him. Come out of a game and it was a 1 1 score or a 2 2 score and he had pitched very very well. He had a 3 5 ERA and went 9 and 7. Watch this ball. It almost stayed fair and it had some English on it. Caught Dunnock by surprise. He look like a lumberjack. All he needs is Babe the Blue Ox next to him. Maybe a maybe one of those fleece jackets. Staying alive.
where he's trying to throw Alex Gordon just about every single pitch in his arsenal changing speeds in the fastball or the cutter sweeping that breaking ball away from him. Breaks his bat. Dunn has to avoid the bat that was headed his way and then take the throw from Quintana and the Royals are done in the sixth. We head to the seventh. Still tied at one. game and plenty more opportunities coming up. Do you want to sit in some of the best royal seats in the house? Tickets for less as Crowns Diamond Club and the best dugout seats to all Royals games. Guys, ticketsforless.com is your trusted source for all Royals tickets. This year, Tickets for Less is celebrating 10 years of local ownership. Check out ticketsforless.com and you too can sit in the best seats at Kauffman Stadium. Quick trip to Southern California this weekend to face the Angels and back at home Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Fizz? Going to be a blast and this weekend it's Duffy Shields and Vargas going up against the Angels. And Guthrie will face Dunn. He's walked him twice and immediately gets a strike across in the outside corner. And then comes up and in one and one. Jeremy came in with a two and three record four seven six earned run average. He's retired eight straight and ten of his last eleven. He's doing his thing. Pitch count at ninety. The one interruption in that stretch was walking done in the fourth. That's hit well. Center field came back and there to make the catch. Oh my. Well, when the ball comes off his bat, it jumps. Well, Lorenzo, he was playing him pretty deep anyway, and he got a good jump on it. See where Hayes' location was. He wanted it down a little bit more, but ball 400 feet and got nothing to show for it. Jeremy says thank you very much. And Rex, there is an example of the depth of that warning track really letting Lorenzo know how close to the wall he was getting. Right. Oh, and then he came inside, and Ramirez not what he wanted to do. Hit a guy with speed who represents the go ahead run. Third time that Ramirez has been on. You've got him right in the wallet. A 
Alexi might be going early in the count. He looks a little steamed. Stole a base in the second. Guthrie throws over. Guthrie got him to ground into a double play in his last at bat. See if he can do it again. He's bluffed to throw to first base. A little bit low, and the count moves Canerco's way two and one. Ball speed. I thought they might send Ramirez a little earlier in the count. He might be concerned about Guthrie's ability to pick him off. Even though Jeremy has four errors this year, he has picked off two runners. He and Shields have very good moves for right-handers. So does Ventura. Two and two. Like Paul was looking for the fastball. Better believe he is now. Ventura, he's probably thinking about just moving Ramirez, not necessarily to steal a base, but to stay out of a double play. Popped him up. Hosmer may have a chance. There he is for the second out. Time to take a look at our AT&T fan photo. It comes from Mark. And we also have a bonus picture tonight from Haley. Love those pictures every night, folks. Thank you. AT&T, thank you as well. Obviously an Eric Hosmer fan. Can't blame him. Now they've got to get Diaz. Ball one. Diaz 0 for 2. And now stuck in a 2 for 27. His batting average has dipped below 190 all the way down to 181. This is a guy very capable. The runner goes and a foul ball struck by Diazza. Diazza hit 17 home runs last year. Has four this year, but all four at the cell. Now, now with a 99 pitches going, you wonder if Guthrie will come back next inning. Now he needs to get it out on the next pitch or two, and maybe Ned will leave him in. Love to see him finish this inning unscathed and then the Royals get some runs for him. He throws over and Ramirez dives back. Alexei eight for nine stealing bases this year. Hosmer has a nice backhand pick, and that's three outs. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Valencia Kane and Siriaco will be coming up for Kansas City. Oh, those hands. Unbelievable.
success around the league. Wild one with Cleveland and Detroit. A game that went on and on. Toronto all over Boston. Edwin Encarnacion, two more homers. Houston and L.A., Minnesota and San Diego coming up. And one of the others just underway there. Now let's go to that game. Our Mazda game break to the 13th. Tie game. Bases loaded. Al Albuquerque on the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a walk-off ball. There you go. 11 to 10 is the final. Five hours and 16 minutes. 13 innings of baseball decided by a walk-off balk. This was a game that was just wild from the beginning. It was 7 to 7 at one point. And guys, the game can be funny. 15 and 4, the Indians, or the Indians were 4 and 15 last year against the Tigers, and this year they're 4 and 1 against them. It's incredible because Detroit was so hot. They had won six in a row. They had won 11 straight road games and swept by the tribe. That's how quickly it turns. And Cleveland had not been playing good baseball going into that series. Funny game. I don't remember ever seeing a balk off. You? Yep. Bob Davidson was the umpire who made the call. Shocker. As the, he got the nickname Balk and Bob Davidson, but uh, yeah, that's clear. I mean, if he had just continued with his motion, he would have been fine. But that movement really cost him. And now, Danny Valencia with a 2-2 count here. Danny one for two, a single his last time up. Kane would follow with a single. The Royals had the bases loaded golden opportunity and Danny rips one to left but right at the left fielder and Diaza takes care of him for out number one. Oh man that's the one he gets underneath that a quarter of an inch and that's out of here. Next pitch by Quintana will be his 90th. But the Royals had loaded the bases for their best opportunity in the fourth and then Siriaco hit into the double play to oh, end it. That's the one he's been waiting for all night. Squared it up. Oh man. He gives you a professional at bat. And now Kane to center field. Very quickly two outs in the seventh. Siriaco was the guy who was up with the bases loaded and one out and he swung at the first pitch just tapped it right back to the mound and even with his speed it was an easy one two three double play. Wade Davis has been warming in the Royals pen likely in for Guthrie who went seven strong innings gave up just three hits one run. Two walks, two strikeouts. And it it was kind of an effort first two innings for Jeremy. And once he smoothed things out, he was terrific the last five. Yeah. Told you he picked up his tempo and he went right at hitters. Used his defense. Great outing. I remember when the Royals got him, it was Dave Island who probably told management because he told us that. Hey, there's that guy at Colorado. He's having a rough year, but I, I know I can straighten him out. And and he came here, and they worked really hard together. And Jeremy has been a terrific starting pitcher for Kansas City. Dave Island, one of the most underrated pitching coaches in the game. He's excellent. He was out here early. I mean, like two o'clock in the afternoon, working with James Shields, in the bullpen session. James will start Saturday's game against the Angels. Siriaco has four home runs in his career. Cutter in's been working pretty good for Quintana. He's left a few out over the plate, but the Royals haven't been able to capitalize on any of them. Mm -hmm. 
Siriaco waiting for the seventh pitch from Quintana, getting his pitch count up. His next will be his 97th. And then he strikes out Pedro. So we will head to the eighth inning of play here at the K, still tied at one. And that is a sweet scene. Jeremy has three children, and it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Jeremy with another strong outing. One run in seven innings. I said in the first inning that the Royals really need for the real Jay Guts to stand up tonight. And he did exactly that. He was marvelous going seven strong innings. Eleven ground balls, six fly ball outs, and three strikeouts. It's usually the other way around. He's a fly ball pitcher. Nice job. And how about this? 38 times in his career, he's gone seven plus since 2013. Only James Shields and Adam Wainwright have done more, and Wainwright with an excellent one hitter the other day. Well, here is Wade Davis. His job keep Chicago quiet. Time for the pin to win. This is our Chevy call to the bullpen. You see Wade's numbers rather dramatic with the strikeouts 36 and 19 in a third innings dramatic. Those are sick numbers. OK they're sick numbers. All right. That's we'll, we'll, that's we'll a call the doctor. That's a modern day term that young people use. Young players. And we are not included. But you're young in mind. Maybe, so yeah, maybe you not, can use that language. Maybe not you. But Davis has been amazing. Cuts that fastball. He's got a four seamer at 98. Good overhand curve. That's all he needs. And good location. Cutters. Look like fastballs, but at the last minute they dart away. Rex, his fastball just seems to explode on hitters as well. It does. He's up there 96 97 and then he throws a cutter in the low 90s. Maybe he drops that yellow hammer here. See you later. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Another term for curveball. So it's, it's a nice bender. He has at least one strikeout in his last in each of his last 18 outings. I mean usually nine to ten strikeouts per nine innings is outstanding and Wade Davis is almost 17 now per nine innings and he just rips a fastball in there for strike one. 
Adam Eaton 0 for 3. You want to keep him off the bases. He has very good speed. Lefty here, then the right hander in Beckham. Where'd that miss? Slash foul advantage Davis one ball two strikes. Wade worked around a Tyler Flowers single for a scoreless eighth on Monday night. Look at that. Wow, at 96 miles an hour, Eaton had no chance in a futile swing. Back to back pays for Wade. Oh, he's he's definitely got a, a mini rock concert going on here, no question. He's just dissecting hitters. It can speak because of his location. He that's not in the middle of the plate. That's right where you want your pitchers to throw that ball. And when they're hitting their spots, you have that kind of velocity, that kind of stuff. Oof. That's what we're seeing. 38 strikeouts now in 20 innings and Beckham takes a first pitch curve strike one. Now that's in the back of his mind and he hasn't even seen his fastball or cutter yet. No he's going to sit on a heater here though. He knows it's coming. Oh, Another forward. curve and he got the pop up. Kane calls off Syriaco three up three down. Another great job for Davis who strikes out two and he now has 38 strikeouts in 20 and a third inning. Waiter, check please. event get great deals on an award-winning lineup and by Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff low price every day Steve Fiziak Rex other Joe Goldberg Jeff Montgomery and what another great performance by Wade Davis one two three in the eighth inning two strikeouts now he'll take a seat and let's hope that offense can come alive as Brett Day Hayes will step in and Kandana still out there. What a time for his first hit and a big fly homer. I'm dialing eight. Okay. He's going to get him. Well, he got Kandana last year in Kandana's last start. Outside, he hit 17 home runs at Triple A Omaha, and then was a September call-up, and he hit one more. It was against that Chicago lefty at 
U.S. Cellular Field on September 29th. Here it comes. Well, you're getting bold. Ooh, that was the one. <laughs> that was it. Brett right now in an 0 for 21. Foul off. Two balls, two strikes. That is flared in foul territory and Dunn will run it down. So he was dialing three as in the first baseman. And Brett Hayes is the first out of the eighth. Rats. Cutter got in on him. That 2 0 -oh pitch is the one. As we take a look at our Toyota League leaders and take a look at the Major League Baseball relievers, the Yankees. Have a star that is really on the rise. He has 45 strikeouts already this year, and Wade Davis right behind him with 38. Aoki fouls it off. Now he's in the hole, nothing in two. Nori drove in the Royals' only run back in the third inning after Siriaco reached on an infield hit, went to second on Hayes' grounder to first. Aoki knocked a base hit through the hole left side and scored Pedro from second. One and two. Boy, the Sox just don't give Quintana much support at all. We do have a member of their bullpen getting ready. That is Jake Patrichka, who has pitched each of the last two nights. Aoki bunts with two strikes on him, and that will be a base hit. How about that, Hud? Two strikes. Third baseman back, and Aoki makes us a believer. Heck yeah. Anything you can do. Get on base. He's good with with two start. He's he's bluffed a few this year, but he's checking him out. He's wanting to know right where he's playing. He's saying, I'm gonna drop that baby right there. Don't have to be perfect, because Gillespie's playing back. Most third basemen do. However, once that once he dropped that down there with two strikes, now believe me, the rest of the league will be playing him in. Scouting reports get around. With two strikes, they're not gonna back up anymore. That's a Really a clutch base hit there to get on. 11th infield hit this year and fifth bunt. Escobar. Somehow, some way, find a gap, a double, even a line. And bring on Holland. Take that lead and bring on Holland. Maybe Ned tries a little hit and run here. Escobar, he's really good in that number two spot. He, he, he can hit that ball on the ground, mainly in the right field. It's where you want it. Yeah. And he gets a gaffer to left. Aoki will make it to third. Escobar's going for second. The throw. Safe. Just like that. A two strike butt and a nice little lob double. And the Royals are in business. Balls out over the middle of the plate. Escobar didn't barrel it, but he got it enough. And with his speed, he's able to get his 12th double. Okay, Rex. Here is Eric Hosmer now at the plate. Infield drawn in. Put him on. Three times Eric has hit the ball to the right side on the ground. They're going to load the bases for Billy Butler. Yeah, you got to put him on here. First base is over. I thought because of Hosmer's struggles against Quintana that he would work Eric because Eric only two for 24 in his career. And 
three ground balls. Now Patrichka has been warming up this entire inning, so they may go get him to face Billy Butler. But Billy has only four hits against Quintana in his career in 21 at bats. No, he's going to come out and get him. And Billy is hitting to five double plays this year, and that's what Ventura is hoping for right here. But Billy, I tell you, this is what hitters love, especially if you're a cleanup hitter. Game on the line right here. Let's see if Billy can take advantage of it. Our Chevy call to the bullpen. Jake Patrichka, his third straight game he has thrown for the White Sox. It's over. Jeff Montgomery and I will break it down from Rivals on Boulevard Royals Live. We'll talk about a phenomenal pitching performance from Jeremy Guthrie. And can the Royals come back here and win this one late? We'll do that. Hear from Ned Yost and much more coming up. And Hud, you said, I don't know if I've ever seen a walk-off balk before. Unfortunately, Aaron Crow does remember that. And this was a year before you guys were here. July 4th, 2011, up in Chicago. And it was Aaron Crow with the walk-off balk. The thing we remember is that before the umpire called it, A.J. Pierzynski called it first. And the White Sox won that one July 4th, 2011. You never know how things will end. The Royals will take one of those right now. Any way possible. For the second time in this game, the Royals have loaded the bases with one out. Okay, got to look for something up. Patricia. He's got an above average fastball slider change. Billy Ouch. goes after the first one and fouls it off his front foot. Look for a ball that you can handle and drive and do anything you can to get that one run across the plate here. Maybe more. 178 ERA. But Rex opponents, first batters faced, are hitting 063 against Patrichka. Yeah, and Wrighty's only hitting 157, so. Ventura knew what he was doing here, but Billy's got to make Ned a believer and a winner. He chases one away from him, and that was a ball. Billy, in his career with the bases loaded, hitting 314, including one slam, but he has not had good efforts on the first two pitches. Finds himself down in the count 0 2. Aoki Escobar Hosmer on the bases. Outside one ball two strikes. Two right field. 
This will be deep enough to get Aoki home. And the Royals take a 2-1 lead on Butler's sacrifice fly. Can't sneak a piece of cheese by a hungry rat. Billy, he's been going that way with authority all night. Almost hit a home run on that ball out, up and away in his first at bat. And here in his last, hopefully his last at bat, he was able to pick it up and pick the RBI up as well. Now Gordon hoping he can add some insurance for Greg Holland. The Royals have not been strong in one run games this year. They're 4 and 11. That's the worst mark in the American League. And remember, the Royals had 31 one run wins last year. Insurance against this White Sox team, you got to have it. Because they'll have the power guys coming up in the ninth inning Gillespie, Viciedo, and Dunn. Low, it's a 2 1 count. Whew, and that ball just almost got underneath Flowers' glove. And Escobar getting a very good lead from third base. Anticipating just that. We just saw his marvelous speed when he was able to leg out a double. Three and one. They're proceeding with caution with Alex Gordon, a left hander, with the right hander Valencia on deck. Ball four. I don't think he wanted any part of Alex. Danny is one for three, but last time up, I mean, he hit the ball right on the screws and lined out to left field. Rawls hitting 208 with just one grand slam this year, and that was off of Escobar's bat with them loaded up. Danny Valencia's first home run in the big leagues, a grand slam in this ballpark against Royal Zach Greinke. Ooh. Lousy single would be just fine. <laughs> now he has fallen behind, and Danny knows. He has to come to my territory. Bases loaded for KC. Escobar, Hosmer, and Gordon all on. Barely caught the corner at 95 to make the count two and one. He didn't want that one. Way inside, it's now a 3 1 count. And Chris has got to get one in there, or Valencia knows that he'll get an RBI and the Greg Holland will have a 3 to 1 lead to work with. Yeah, walks as good as a hit here. Ball four. The Royals now have a 3 1 lead, and Patritska kind of threw his arms out as if to ask Tom Hellion where that miss. 
A very good at bat by Danny Valencia. Got that right. And he wanted that low strike. It could have been called either way. Didn't go with it. So a sacrifice fly. Now a bases loaded walk. And Holland has a two run cushion. And Donnie Cooper coming out to visit with his struggling young right hander. Who was absolutely sensational coming into this night. 14 of his 18 appearances this year had been scoreless and 10 have been hitless. Trichka, who was the White Sox second round pick in 2010 out of Indiana State. That's where one of the Royals top picks last year came from Sean Manaya, who is now at Single A Wilmington pitching pretty well. Lorenzo Kane is one for three. Lorenzo hit a grand slam last year on July 4th off a of right hander Jimenez. Ball one. Got to zone him right where you want him down the middle. Ball two and Lorenzo kind of deked him like he was going to square and bunt. Holland waiting for the top of the ninth. Might want to take another one here. Although with the bases loaded, you know, if he puts one down the middle, you, you want to get, get you that. But he's already walked the batter ahead of him. Take one. And he catches the outside corner. There you go. Same situation now. Now you made him throw a strike. Go to work. You can see how Tyler Flowers was lowering that glove, trying to get Patricia to keep it down, which he did. And there wasn't much Kane could do with that last pitch. Fouled it off. Rolls it to the first baseman Dunn who steps on the bag that will end the inning but the Royals score two, the big hits from Billy Butler a sacrifice fly and a bases loaded walk by Danny Valencia so bring on Holly. It's hammer time. has been fantastic against the 
Chicago White Sox. He has dominated them throughout his young career. 16 of 17 save opportunities, a 1 2 7 ERA. He has not allowed a run in his last nine innings of work. Gerard Dyson comes into the game defensively for the Royals, moving Lorenzo Kane to right field and Dyson center. It will be Connor Gillespie, Diane Viciato, and then Adam Dunn. Gillespie, one for three. That single came back in the first inning. He has an eight game hit streak going. Greg this year, 25 strikeouts, only five walks, and 16 and two thirds innings. He's got what it takes. He's got that blazing fastball, split finger slider. He misses on the first two pitches. Greg entered with one out in the ninth on Sunday after Jones' home run brought Baltimore to within striking distance at 8 6. He retired Chris Davis and Nelson Cruz on grounders, recording his 12th save, which is second in the American League behind Minnesota's Glenn Perkins. A strike and it's two and one. Gillespie this year hitting 365 against right handers. So Holland gets back in the count at two and two. He has that devastating slider and also split finger that looks like it's a fastball and then just dives down at the end. Hayes did a great job blocking the ball in the dirt. And his last save. This is inside three and two. Gillespie's a nice hitter, nice little hitter there. Puts the ball in play. He's looking for a fastball here. Popped him up. Escobar wants it. One big out. He's able to get back into the count there. The fastball in, you know, you're, you're just better off maybe just fouling it back. You try to put that in play, he'll beat you. So Viciato, who has very good power, he went deep in Monday's Chicago win. He has flied out to left. Lined hard to center field and Kane made a wonderful catch coming in to take a run away from Chicago and grounded out 0 for 3. After tonight the Royals will not play a central team until Cleveland and they come to town on June 10th. In there, one and one. That's a strike, and it's one and two. Greg wants to go at the heater. Out of play, it'll stay one ball and two strikes. Royals trying to get back to 500 at 23 and 23. 
They'll have tomorrow off. Fly to Southern California to take on the Angels in a three-game series starting Friday. Duffy, Shields, and Vargas, and then we immediately come home to take on the Astros Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Well, he's having trouble commanding his off-speed pitches. Uh, they're not working down in the zone like he normally throws them. Lower half and just out in front of that arm a, a tad. And he's not staying on top of those pitches, but no, no worries. He'll get it. Even that first pitch he threw a breaker to Vicieto that was called strike was a high one. Again, knocked out of play a little late with his swing was Vicieto. Line to right field, a base hit. So now Dunn will come up representing the tying run. And they will have a pinch runner for Vicieto. That is Moises Sierra. will shift their defense they'll have three infielders in the right side Hosmer will be holding Sierra that will allow Siriaco to play a little closer to the right side and Danny Valencia moves to the second base side of second with Escobar pulled way over near short ball one Greg against Adam Done two for ten with seven strikeouts. Holland having a difficult time commanding that split. Got yeah, staying up in the zone. Huh. There's another one that he's having trouble with, and Brett Hayes will come out for a visit. You don't normally see him miss up with those pitches. Those are always pitches that are directed down. And that's that's the reason why he stayed with that fastball on BC He he stayed with it. Oh, that was a slider. Yeah, he, he, his front shoulder. He, he's pulling off uh, of the pitch. He's not staying directly down. Now he he typically does fall off to the right side. There it is. He got the heater across in the inside corner and gets back to a 2 1 count. Dunn hit a 440 foot monstrous home run last night. That proved to be the winning hit. Wow, that is a great pitch. It looks like it's going to be inside and then backed up and caught the inside corner. So he's even with Adam Dunn. It's that slider. Only reason I could tell is because of the way he was gripping it. He tried to throw it again. Now the count's full three and two. He went back to back with the slider still hasn't shown the command he wants with it Ramirez is waiting his turn on deck. And he went three straight sliders and winds up walking Adam Dunn. I think he was just a little bit hesitant about throwing him a, a fastball upstairs and we never hardly ever see Dave Island make a trip to the mound when Holland's out there but he. You need the pitch mechanic, the doctor, to come out here and, and see if he can help him with some developing some more downward angle. 
So Garcia comes out to pinch run for Dunn. So they've got their speed guys on with Sierra at second base and Garcia at first base. That's the perfect time for Dave Allen to come out. This is the first game, Rex, where we've had any kind of humidity. And uh, I've seen Greg go behind the mound to keep dusting his hand off with the rosin bag, and he wants a new baseball. He'll face Ramirez, who's been on three times this evening, twice on fielder's choices. And one time he was hit by a pitch. He's three for 12 with three strikeouts against Greg. Holland fell behind Gillespie, but finally got him to pop up on a 3 2 pitch. Then the single by Viciedo, then the walk to Dunn. Put him in the lane. He'll take a double play. Strike one. Lexi is grounded into six double plays this year. Right to shortstop. Siriaco to turn it. Double play, game over. That's a winner. Way to go. That's what you want. The pitch doctor, Dave Island, came out and said, hey, why don't we just keep a ball down and let him roll into a little 6-4-3? So the Royals end this homestand winning. And they go 5-4 and four on this homestand. And Ramirez, who had been so hot, oh. running it right to Escobar, to Siriaco, <laughs> to Hosmer. <laughs> you can't get it any better than that. Way to finish the home stand with a winning record. All right. Well, we typically give that bus driver seat to an offensive player, but the chief driver of the game tonight goes to Jeremy Guthrie. Why not? The real Jay Gut showed up for his team today. Kept the White Sox down to just one run. Seven innings, three hits, one run, two walks, and two strikeouts. All aboard Jeremy Guthrie. Fantastic job. Now we tip our cap to you. And his son said, thanks a lot, Dad. Way to go. And Joe Goldberg is with Billy Butler, who got the game-winning sacrifice fly. All right, Biz, thank you very much. Very good hitting homestand for Billy Butler. Most importantly, knocking in the run there on the sack fly. But let's start with the pitching in this game and talk about your starter, Jeremy Guthrie. What was so impressive about him? Um, you know, he was just good from pitch one, and, uh, you know, he really dominated the game and uh, gave us a chance to win. Uh, Quintana was just as good, so, um, you know, we needed that from him, so he did a great job. All right, you come up there, you're facing Patrichka, you faced him the other night, and he's been really good in this series. What's the mindset? What are you looking for in that situation? I mean, he's got a really good sinker, and, um, you know, it's hard to get underneath it, and... I'm just trying to get a pitch up, and I was glad I got the job done. I don't, I don't want to make it to two strike, but um, you know it's a little more nerve wracking. But I got done. And then you you look in the ninth here too. Your good buddy Greg Holland coming out there for the save. You guys are really close. You've seen them close a lot of these games. Couple runners on base. What'd you think there in the ninth? It's almost like he's more comfortable with runners on. But uh, um, you know when, when we see Holland, we, we know it's over. Last thing for you, I know that at this time of year, there, there's not necessarily a must win in baseball, but how important was this game to avoid the sweep and, and have a winning homestand? I mean, we swung the bats good this series and, uh, you know, only come up with one, but, you know, it's a winning homestand and we'll move on. Good job, Billy. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. That is Billy Butler, and you mentioned it, Fizz. He had the game-winning RBI, also batting 391 in his last six games, leading the Royals here to victory. And Joel Davis gets the win. He goes to three and one. And for Cantana, tough luck loss. He's now 0 and 4 versus Kansas City in his career. Billy got him tonight.